Hello, my name is Abe, but welcome back to Slay the Spire. Let's play Run of the Watcher, Ascension Level 2. Because we accidentally played Ascension, one, Ascension Level 1 last time. Try to go for the heart again. Go for the heart kill. The only question is, what do we do here? Do we lose our starting relic to obtain a random boss relic? It could be amazing. Could be a, a garbage relic. But is it better than Miracle? I mean, the Miracle is pretty good. Do we take max HP plus 14? That's probably worth it, especially in the early ascensions when you heal the full after the first floor. That's a lot of HP that you can, you can transition elsewhere. Random rare card. Random common relic. Do you get to choose the card or the relic? I'm gonna say no, because I know you don't choose the relic, but I thought at one point you could choose a card to obtain. Like you choose a, a random colorless card to attain, obtain it. It gives you three choices and you can pick one. I don't know. But I tell you what, let's go for the max HP up and we'll transition this into a lot of question marks and hopefully transi transition the HP into better rewards in the future. Although I'm not gonna do the burning elite because there's two shops. And I would rather do some other elites like this path here to get a lot of combat card upgrade opportunities. This is also a good path here on the on the left, but there's only one elite. Actually, there's a late shop, two elite. All right, you know what? I've convinced myself, this path. Laos. Well, pretty easy first fight here. I do like the early game watcher because if you can erupt and then just immediately go for for attacks, you're doing a lot of damage. Apply 11 mark, all enemies lose HP equal to their mark. So pressure points. This is, as far as I understand it, this is poison. It's poison except instead of the poison doing damage every turn, you have to play pressure points again and again and again. If we add a lot of pressure points, we could have a lot of effectively stuff, a card that's better than a strike. I want to try to do a pressure point build. Is this even feasible? I got no idea, but we could give it a shot. Heal, max HP, or a relic for a curse regret. If we're going to go to a late shop, we could take the curse, but we would have to live with it for a little while. Give me the curse. We got Nunchuck. I don't know if that's any good. The Pressure Points card, is that an attack? No, it's a skill, so it doesn't even work off of Pressure Points. So I have to feel like we, unfortunately, probably, possibly, made a not very good play there, but you never know. Uh, let's erupt. Strike, strike. That's why I wanted to upgrade the strike earlier. It's easy scale, you def can make it a build. It is easy scaling with pressure points, but I feel like you need a couple of them at least. At the start of your turn, scry, gain mantra, collect. I think a collect is a good energy dump. <laughs> Disposable account, you have a good night. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. X-Ray Breaker X, hey, hello, welcome. How are you doing? A little bit of long time no see there. It's been a little while. In Mantra gain block. We don't need triple damage if we're, and we don't need vulnerability if we're going to go for pressure points. I'm not saying we're going to go for pressure points, but why not keep it going for the time being? Oh God! Um, this sucks. I can do 36 damage next turn. I think we're gonna die on this guy because we don't have a lot of damage output right now. No, he's going to make us vulnerable in this turn, so we got, we got one more turn to kill him. Uh, 
Eh, we might get him. I would love to get pressure points again, but the strikes will do it. Okay, so we did we didn't really come that close to, de to death, but it wasn't necessarily a good fight. Third eye, good block and scry. We do need more block cards, so I will add one of those. Let's avoid healing if we can. And I say avoid healing if we can, because we do have a a heal in the blood vial. It's not a great heal, but if we avoid damage for a couple of rooms, it'll be good enough. All enemies lose HP equal to their mark. Does that count as an attack? No, because it's not attack damage, it's a pressure point. These guys are doing 20 goddamn damage. Are you kidding me? Well, let's pressure point strike. Collect Miracle Third Eye. I didn't scry. <laughs> I just clicked end turn, which canceled my scry. Hmm. Okay. Okay. This will work. This will work. Strike. Strike. We got energy out of it, but it doesn't matter because we're going to Vigilance anyways. Here it comes! I've activated my trap card! Dude, I hate not being able to do, like, 15 points of damage on a turn. We, we get these, these weird turns where some, t some turns we do, like, 50 damage. Some turns we can't do 5. I love the sound effect on that guy. Sash Whip, Just Lucky, Nirvana. Whenever you scry, gain block. We don't have an innate scry. The only scry we have is that third eye we took. Healing when you use a potion. I'm gonna take that, because that's that's really good. Especially if you get a white beast statue. Oh my lord. Oh well. Strawberry. We don't need the max HP, I'll take the Sapphire Key there, and then we'll buy potions to heal. Maybe. I only have one, one HP. <laughs> well, we can heal five HP at least. Um, mm, Flash of Steel is good. You probably want to upgrade. You probably want to remove the curse. So you know what? We're putting all of our money here on the sentries. Here's your vulnerability. Here's your pressure point. Here's your vigilance. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Oh, good lord. Nine, 12, 12, 24. 33 damage. I can kill one. But then we're still taking damage. Man, we're dead. Okay, we'll start up another run here. Definitely being a little bit too aggressive. Let's not be so GD aggressive this time. Be aggressive, but not that aggressive. And give me one HP enemies. We'll do the classic route. And I will definitely go question mark path into the elite, the burning elite. That seems like a good idea. Especially because we might get very lucky and get a... Uh, a free elite. You know, we could bounce left to get a free elite if we can't get it on the right path. So we have a couple of different ways we can possibly get a free elite. Flying Sleeves, Bowling Bash, Carve Reality. 10 damage and a Smite that does 12 damage. Or Flying Sleeves, Upgraded, does 12 damage. Flying Sleeves is not a bad card. Retaining it, playing it on an appropriate turn with vulnerability or double damage or triple damage if you have divinity is pretty good. And this, I, what I don't like about Carve Reality is that the smite costs one energy. So you know what? Give me the flying sleeves. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll go all the way. Give me the item. It's the boot. It is not all that good. 
So you know what, we'll heal. We'll just say that we got a boot from that. Oh, we could have healed here. But instead we'll just remove a card and we'll remove a basic strike. We are gonna get a free elite, but we have to go on the left path. I think it's worth doing. Deceive reality. Now I do like safety because it's still good block for one and then you get to hold the safety for the future. But I think I'm gonna go talk to the hand because it is block with attack. We'll upgrade the... We should probably upgrade Eruption so we can play more cards off of it. And then we'll go left just to get the free elite. I know we could go right and fight the burning elite, but we can do that on a future floor. We don't have to do it on this floor. So, smack him, smack him. Smack him. Strike dummy. Strike dummy. Cards containing strike deal more damage. Flying sleeves does not contain the word strike. Ergo, I'm extremely saddened by this. And also, strikes are actually good attacks now. Because they do 9 damage by default. Interesting. Perseverance. Retain to gain more block. I think it's decent. Decent enough anyways. But we'll upgrade Talk to the Hand so we can get more block off of attacking. I'll take the Sapphire Key there. And then we'll hit him. Vigilance. Wait. Logavalin is a very good enemy, I think, to have Eruption on. Which I guess we're going to activate right now. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna wait. We have like a 50-50 chance of drawing it, and if we draw it on this turn it's better, because we have flying sleeves and a strike. We have an extra attack, basically. Because I just don't want to burn the energy. Still, an 18 damage basic strike is pretty good. So, three energy. We're gonna take four damage. That's nothing. Lagavulin ain't got nothing on me. And we're also gonna erupt on the next turn, which is pretty dope. So Lagavulin is gonna go down just freaking immediately. That's a very good fight. Omamori's Great Liquid Memories. Choose a card in your discard pile and add it to your hand to cost zero. Interesting. Carve Reality Conclude. Deal 12 damage, 16 damage to all enemies, end your turn. Your next attack deals 8 additional damage. Wreath of Flame is interesting, because if we play this with that Flying Sleeves, it's 16 additional damage, or 32 additional damage, if we are in the Wrath state. Dun 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 dun. Aw, oh, Milk Jug, I'm sorry to hear that you had... Such a... a bad day. All the hugs. Liquid Memories is the lifesaver? No, I think you're thinking of Fairy in a Bottle. Dude, I really like reality. We didn't take the other reality card. Do I want Conclude? I don't like Conclude because it ends your turn. Like, if you... You, you, if you have Wrath, you want to play Conclude to do the to do a lot of damage, but you can't exit your Wrath state afterwards. Wreath of Flame stacks. Yeah, but, like, who cares? Like, I understand. Wreath of Flame is good if you have multiple attacks, and we have one card that does multiple attacks, but instead of, you know, one energy for five additional damage, I could just play a Strike. They do nine damage. A strike is more damage than a Wreath of Flame into a strike. Now, Wreath of Flame into uh, Ragnarok, that's pretty crazy because that is like 40 extra damage. But I don't, I don't, I don't think I like this card because it's not your next attacks this turn. It's just you play it and you'll eventually do more damage. So what? You could just play an attack and do more damage. 
Like, it, unless you're building around multi-hit cards, it's not that good. So I'm just going to instead take a... I'll take a single car of reality and we'll upgrade it. So we can just uh, hold on to this, the smite and play the smite when we are in wrath state. That's my thinking. Maybe that's bad logic. I don't know. Hold up. Nine damage. Fourteen. It's twenty-three. Twenty-three plus sixteen is thirty-nine plus another eighteen. Oh, we absolutely have you. Protect, just lucky, evaluate. We're kind of going hard on these retain cards so far. Actually, no, because again, I didn't take the uh, the safety. I only have perseverance. I, I like evaluate. I think evaluate's a great card. So we're gonna grab that one. Well, let's upgrade. Let's upgrade the. Let's upgrade perseverance because if we want to play this after a few turns, it's so much better. Find some potions. Fairy in a bottle is very good. Liquid memories. So what? You get to play another card. It's a card you get to choose, but you know, once you play all your good powers and stuff like that, and your exhausting cards, what do you what do you care about this? I'd rather take fairy in a bottle and then dump decks to take the duplication potion. And by doing this, we can duplicate the talk to the hand card against Hexaghost and then have a pretty easy, I hope, kill. And I do think... Oh, you know what? Boot? Increasing the damage of our flying sleeves. That's okay. I was going to say, I do want to kill the other enemy because I don't want to become frail. If we're going for offensive damage with eruption, crush joints is pretty good in order to in order to apply vulnerability. Um, but I'm not going to take it right now. I feel like there's other cards that I want to upgrade and the one turn of vulnerability is not that good. So, instead, let's get Evaluate upgraded. 10 block for one, en ten block for one energy plus the insight is very good. And I will duplicate Talk to the Hand. We get 6 block for every attack that we play. Honestly, that's pretty good. Boom, 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 boom. How long can a run of this game last for? <laughs> More like an hour plus, depending on how much Abe talks. Look. Sometimes the Spire runs can last for a while, but it's not just because I I spend my time talking. It's just that the game gets complicated sometimes, and especially, especially if you're doing the heart, it can last for a little bit longer. It jerks. Start hitting him. 24 block just by attacking. That's pretty good. Like at this point, we can probably just stay in our wrath state and just hit, 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 hit. In fact, that, that might just be a synergy that we want to strive for in the future. Just get talk to the hands, put them on the enemy, and then all of a sudden, we're just blocking by attacking every turn. That seems pretty decent. Like, we we kind of chewed through Hexaghost pretty quickly. Blasphemy Vault Alpha. I like Vault, and the reason why is because you can play Eruption, Vault, 
and then take advantage of the wrath state for a total of two turns. Alpha, Beta, Omega is pretty good though. Um, but you need the energy to make it happen. Alpha Innate is pretty decent as well. Only one energy for that. Hmm. Alpha or Vault? Alpha or Vault? Alpha or Vault? We, we took them both. Well, no. We had a Nilri's Codex giving us Alpha on the last run. But we had a couple of Vaults in our deck. And they were pretty effective. We'll go for the Vault. And we'll go Cursed Key here. Violet Lotus, I have a theory that you can go infinite with this, but I don't know how. Take Cursed Key, because we have Omomori. What does Omega do? When you play Alpha, it adds a Beta for 2 energy. When you play the Beta for 2 energy, it adds an Omega for 3 energy. When you play the Omega for 3 energy, at the end of your turn, for all turns, you explode 450 damage to all enemies. So you do a lot of damage once you play the Omega, but getting to that point is a little bit tricky. 12 damage incoming. This seems like a block turn. I'm sorry, Eruption. We're gonna get hexed. You can hex me. Having four energy is gonna make a, a vault combo much easier to make happen. I will say, though, that it would be nice to know that we were going to have an energy relic come up before we had taken our rare card because if i had known that i might have just decided to take the uh the alpha beta omega because having four energy makes that actually work well it'll work more easily okay there's our eruption hit him hit him We'll add the insight into our draw pile. It, it's it's not really technically worth it at all because you add the insight and then you play the insight. That adds two dazes, but the card draws two cards, so it like equals the same number of cards you would have had just without playing the daze. I don't know. It's weird. Vault. Take an extra turn after this one. Hmm. This is an interesting one because we can knock down these birds pretty easily. It's still early ascension, so they only require three hits. But if I erupt, we're going to be taking a lot of extra damage. But if I erupt Flying Sleeves Miracle Vault, we can go to the next turn immediately. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. So yeah, we'll erupt Flying Sleeves. Miracle, Vault, next turn. Then we can do Talk to the Hand, Strike, Strike. First of all, do a lot of damage. Second of all, take no damage because we had some decent attacks and an Evaluate. So this is not a bad set of turns at all. Flying Sleeves, we can kill one. Then we have 12. We have 18 damage on the board. We can easily block it. And I think we should with exiting our wrath state. Because we can knock down these birds by hitting them a few times. In fact, we can do it right now. Smack them, smack them, smack them, smack them, and smack them. Easy fight. Skill potion. Can't use it. I like the potions that we have. We have no reason to use the potions if we don't need them, which is the only problem. Flurry of Blows. Deal six damage. Returns from your discard pile when you change stances. I don't like it. We could take Halt. I, I never really take Halt because I don't like the fact that you only really get a lot of value out of Halt when you're in the Wrath State. You get 28 block, which is pretty decent. But you have to have Halt and be in Wrath in the same turn, which is kind of hard to make happen. And if you take another turn with Vault, you're not going to be able to Vault Halt. Or Halt Vault, I should say. Does that make any sense? Thank you. 
We're gonna go Vigilance. The energy refund might be important if we can Wrath Vault and then play some attacks. Well, we got it on the wrong turn, unfortunately. Next turn we can Vault. But we're taking a lot of damage on this turn, and the blocks are expensive. If I hit him, we'll gain three block. So Eruption Flying Sleeves is nine block. Defend, defend is another 10. We'll take one damage. But we don't have the energy to play all those because we can't play. No, we will have the energy to play them because we're going to gain two energy from Calm. So Erupt, Flying Sleeves, defend, defend. And you know what? Let's Miracle Smite because we're in the Wrath State anyways, and that means we take zero damage. Now, you're doing 54. That kind of sucks. On the positive side, our Vault is free. And you're dead. That was a pretty good turn. Blessing of the Forge, upgrade all cards in your hand for the rest of combat. It is a potion. I mean, I don't see the, I don't see the point in taking that card right now. And we'll strike. 10 damage, retain increase its damage by five. I think it's expensive. I think it's too expensive. Like, eventually it can be worth more than smites and strikes, but for two energy, I'd really want something that's a little bit more powerful than that. And I'm not going to take the potion, because, again, I don't think we need it. I think our current set of potions are, like, nearly perfect. Nearly perfect, but not quite perfect. I'm going to vault. We only need to hit the bird on the left once to knock him down. We can easily put up enough block, get through our deck. Next turn, we're going to get Eruption, and it's the perfect turn to have this on, because the bird on the left only needs to get hit once to, to die, and the Chosen is not even attacking. So we're going to Erupt, Strike, Talk to the Hand, Strike, Smite. It's a good turn for it. It's a real good turn for it. It's Armaments, basically. That potion. I mean, th the difference is it's armaments for one combat, not for all your combats. That's what I don't like about it. Retain, enter calm, end your turn. Meditate's pretty interesting, but I don't like having meditate plus vault because you can't use them both at the same time. And that's usually what you would like to do. You would like to meditate and vault at the si in the same turn. Sanctity is pretty good because you can draw more cards. Meditate is decent, but I'm just going to take Sanctity because it's a it's a decent block card. I will remove a card. Let's remove a basic defend. Slowly start removing these cards from our deck. We'll smith upgrade the vault to make it ch much cheaper. And also, uh, another reason to upgrade that vault is that if we can duplicate the card somehow, now we have a duplicated, upgraded vault. We're gonna go hard as quickly as we can against this jerk. I'm gonna use my energy potion too, because I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the hand, erupt strike, strike vigilance with the energy potion and the miracle. Cause I want as much block as possible, and that gets us as much block as possible. We'll get nine plus eight, seventeen out of eighteen, we'll get hit for one point of damage. That's not too bad. I can handle that. But I do not want to be in the Wrath State and take a total of 19 damage on the turn. No, thank you. Let's draw.
carve. Strike, miracle, vault. We'll keep the smite, and if we get eruption... <clears throat> excuse me, if we get eruption, we can kill him on this turn. Very good use of vault. Decent. Sands of time. I do like Sands of Time. Why do I like Sands of Time and not the uh, wind-up strike or windmill strike? Because Sands of Time, you can always just play it. I did not mean to click on it. I was I was actually not going to take it, but I guess we're stuck with it now. Um, you can always play it if you have the energy for it. But I was going to take something else in that situation. <laughs> I kind of screwed myself a little bit. We'll upgrade it in the future and we'll at least have it on hand to, to play whenever we feel the need. Uh, let's go left path. We have been pretty good at elites so far. Ceramic fish is god awful. This is definitely when I would like to have some more potions, but at least we still have a fairy in a bottle. We can skip the next elite if we if we don't feel comfortable with it. Yeah, this is gonna be a, a annoying fight here, huh? Slaver on the right is gonna make us vulnerable. I attacked the wrong enemy at the beginning of this combat. Are we gonna erupt? If we're gonna erupt, we should probably attack the slaver on the left. Even though this guy is gonna make us vulnerable. We do have Vigilance as well. All right, so, Smite will do 24 damage. Eruption, Strike will do it as well. So Erupt, Strike, Smite him, Vigilance, end our turn, take no damage. We can't attack on the next turn, but we won't take damage on this turn. Okay, I like it. Erupt, Strike, Smite, Miracle, Vigilance, end turn. Not half bad. The Sands of Time will just get cheaper and cheaper. It's honestly a pretty bad turn because I don't have any blocks, but we got a little bit lucky and we're still drawing. So, you know what? Honestly, that ended up working. Thank you, Sanctity. Twenty-three damage, huh? Basically just gonna wait for eruption and then go to town. If we could get it. Although we could actually kill him on this turn. We're not going to be blocking for all of the damage though, but it's probably still okay. Actually, now we can block for all the damage, because Sanctity is better than Perseverance in this case. So we'll block. No, we can't block, block for all the damage. We'll, we'll still get close, but... Yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. What am I talking about? Can't exit stance, that's fine. We'll take one damage. Now the Taskmaster has to go. We're getting a lot of wounds added to our deck. Don't wound me! We'll get him. We got him. Any attack will get in. Even a basic strike. Anchor. Like it. Deals additional damage equal to the mantra you've gained this combat. We have none, so I don't think that's worth it. Gain block, exit stance, draw cards, exit stance. Empty mind and empty body could be decent. I haven't really played around with them. But I'm just gonna skip for the time being. I think I will go for the next elite. I think we're I think we're in a decent enough position that we can make it happen. You're doing 24 damage. That's 48 damage if we erupt. But we could also erupt Vigilance, but I don't really see the point in doing that. I think we should probably just talk Vigilance Strike, get the block thanks to Talk to the Hand, and then we also get that insight added to our 
Oh, sorry, not the inside. We get the calm. Not the right thing. Next turn is gonna suck. So honestly, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take another freaking turn is what I'm gonna do. I don't like that turn. I don't really love this turn either, but we're gonna we're gonna hope that this turn works out better for us. Okay, we're gonna take five damage. That's not too bad. Sands of Time is getting cheaper. Perseverance, Sanctity, draw two cards. If we erupt, Sands of Time is a kill. So I'm just gonna hit him with anything else that I have. And then we'll erupt, Sands of Time, Snake Plant's dead. An upgraded car of reality. I, I actually wouldn't mind it. Something that does a, a little bit more damage and that we can uh, hold on to the smite for wrath seems decent, but I feel like in this deck right now we don't really have synergies, which is something that I feel like we need to add in. Manuk, good night. Have a good sleep. You know, we have some cards and whatnot that we can play, but we retain some cards and then just wrath and then play them. Like, that's our whole deal. That's our whole shtick. Is that enough? I don't know. Certainly hope so. You're gonna do 18 damage, huh? Well, if you're gonna do 18 damage, let me flying sleeves you. Dump those cards. 18 damage again. Okay, well, you know what? We have Eruption, Vault, Talk to the Hand, Sands of Time, Perseverance. This is an amazing turn and you're gonna die. So, I hope you're okay dying. Nirvana, whenever you scry, don't scry. Pressure points, nope, we do not have the other pressure points. That was the last run. Another Perseverance could be good. I'll actually take that. I wanna upgrade it, but I'll, I, will, I will take it. You're doing 12 damage. We start with 10 block. I think this is an eruption turn. Turn one. I really do. We take two damage, but we did like half of his health in damage. We can take an extra turn. It does make the perseverances better. And we can't quite kill him, except we absolutely can because we have smites. So that was a very good fight against the book. Preserved Insect is a decent uh, relic to have. Maybe Chain Stances gain four block. That's so little block. Wreath of Flame, your next attack deals more damage. But again, I, I don't really like that because I could just play an attack. We don't have Ragnarok. Another pressure points is interesting, but it's not that's not the run. We're not marking. Not anymore, we're not. One, two, three. No vault, but we'll uh, play it when it comes back around. You hurt me? Oh, because I didn't gain block. I didn't attack the chosen, I attacked the bird. I made a mistake. We have Vigilance coming up, right? Nope. But he's just gonna make me weak. Which is not that bad. Let's start realitying this guy. He will die to the sands of time. He will die to the Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Empty Fist, Foresight, Windmill Strike, Cut Through Fate. Windmill Strike is the other one. Retain, do damage, run retain, increase its damage by X. This combat. I don't know. We'll take it. <laughs> this will be the retain build. 
We're gonna retain every single card we can. Cling, cling, cling. Now, unfortunately, we cannot put Talk to the Hand on this guy because of his artifact protection, so we might as well just play the card, honestly. Just to get, just to dump it, really. I mean, it does less damage than our strikes. And it's not going to come around for us to hit the automatons with, because hopefully we're going to be doing eruption soon. So... Eh, you know what? It might come back around, I guess. It's a pretty not great turn, though. 14 plus 8, what is that, 22 damage? 44 if we erupt. We could just block. It's one of those weird combats where we get stronger as the fight goes on. Because our, our Windmill Strike, Sands of Time, and Perseverances are going to get better and better and better. And if we could dump the Strikes and Defends from our deck, they would cycle around much faster. Only one enemy is attacking. Can we kill you? We did lose the eruption. 23 damage. We can do 43 damage to you with Sands of Time, Windmill Strike. We'll probably just play and evaluate in that case. And then we'll do a... Flying Sleeves. Strike. Carve Reality. I wanted to dump Flying Sleeves because I don't want to have a hand full of Retain cards. I want to be able to cycle through my deck at some point. They are all attacking. Lovely. Dum dum. Dum dum. Kill you. And then, honestly, I think this is Miracle Vault. Take another turn. Now there's only 28 damage on the board, and Perseverance is not fully get us there, but they get us very close to getting there. So I think what we're gonna do is play one, then Insight for draw. I was really hoping for Eruption, which we'll get it next turn. Next turn's a perfect turn to get it, though, because the Bronze Automaton is not gonna be attacking. Now his Hyper Beam will do 100 damage, so we have to make sure we, you know, get back to Vigilance as quickly as possible, but it'll hopefully happen. How much damage can we do? 20? 32? 42 damage. We can easily do 42, which is not enough to kill him. If we can't kill him, we should do damage and block. So, Perseverance. Give me a smite, defend, end turn. We'll take no damage, we'll slow play it a little bit, erupt on this turn. Though I am scared, but we're gonna do it anyways. Insight we can hold on to. Insight gets us really close to getting vigilance. Hundred and two damage. Well, we didn't get vigilance, <laughs> but we do have the fairy in a bottle, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, we're gonna evaluate insight because if we draw insight, we can draw, we can play insight. We do get vigilance. In that case, play sands of time, play vigilance, play perseverance. We're only going to take, like, 13 damage. Much better. Now he's going to take a turn off. Okay, we erupt. Windmill Strike, Sands of Time, Car of Reality, Strike, Smite. He's dead next turn. If we draw any attacks, luckily we drew some attacks. Okay, good stuff. Alpha, Wish, Brilliance, Spirit Shield. 
Wish is so interesting. Choose one, gain eight plated armor, four strength, or thirty gold. I wish, I wish upon a star that we could wish omniscience and get sixteen plated armor per combat. That would be amazing. Or wish multiple wishes plus multiple omnisciences. But I'm also thinking alpha could be really good. Alpha, beta, omega. Because we could, we have the energy that we can play these cards. And it gives us an out for combats with a lot of enemies that we can't really kill easily. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to take Holy Water so that we can use the miracles to play Omega. Will this work? I mean, I certainly hope so. Now, I have to do the Burning Elite in order to get the key piece. This is an Alpha, Beta, Omega turn, if I've ever seen one. We have to upgrade Alpha to make it innate, though. And we need to thin out the deck by getting rid of Strikes and Defends. x Breaker X says, Wish and Lesson Learned are my favorite cards for the Watcher. I like Lesson Learned. I think it's one of the strongest cards in the game. Wish is fun. Omniscience is even more fun. No one's attacking. If no one's attacking, I'm just going to vault so that no one is still attacking. And then we will hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Now that's a lot of incoming damage. Oh no! What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna kill this guy. I guess we're just gonna put up block, unfortunately. It's kinda hoping we could do something else against him. He's doing uh, 36 damage. Dime Lodge. It's 37 block. Haven't gotten Alpha, haven't gotten. Talk to the hand when we'll strike Sands of Time. Or Vigilance. This is a very strange set of draw. We've gotten all of our bad cards early. Well, not really bad cards. But check this out. Alpha. Insight. Theta. Miracle. Vigilance. We take one damage. And everyone dies. Hey, Omega. It's so satisfying to use. Now cards like Third Eye are possibly more interesting to play because they can get you to your Alpha, Beta, and Omega faster. If that's what we're going to be doing. I only need to block one. And because I have... Only two energy worth of attacks. I'm just going to play two energy worth of attacks. This is technically ten damage. I don't count smite because you can retain it and play it on a on an eruption turn. Hmm. He's going to do 40 damage. I don't have the block... So I guess we're not going to erupt. We're just going to... Dude, I hate slow playing this guy, but I don't really know what else we're going to do. I, I need to get to Vault. I know I could pop a potion, but I don't think we need to pop a potion. Or at least I don't want to pop a potion. If I pop a potion, what would it... If I pop a potion, what would it be for? It would be for 52 damage out of Windmill Strike? That would work, but the Duplication Potion is so much more efficient elsewhere. So I'm just going to third eye. We'll get vault on the next turn. We'll block, we'll smite him. Dumping the smite just because I think we're just going to alpha beta omega this guy to death. We have the insight. We have a 50-50 chance of drawing it if we Alpha Insight. And if we do draw it, then we can immediately Vault. We didn't draw it. We could still Vault and take another turn. Talk to the Hand Vault. I actually like that. 
our other cards get better. And now we can do five. I have seven energy. This will do 43 damage plus 18. Ah, oh, we got him. I have to play the miracles, but I mean, this is what they're there for, to play. So no Alpha, Beta, Omega on this guy, but if you're in Wrath, apply Vulnerability, nah, skip all those cards. Burning Elite, here I come. Cursed, Heal, Madness, lose HP. Madness is interesting, especially if you pop it on the retainable cards. Or Vault, or, you know, Beta, Omega, make them cheap. But I'm just gonna lose the max HP. I don't like thinning out the deck with madnesses, usually. Remove a card, remove please. The basic strikes, they gotta go. They gotta go. If you somehow get three omnisciences and you can play Omega first, to first turn lol. Maybe. I don't know how the or I don't know how the order of operations would work is the only question. What are we gonna do here? We're just gonna alpha beta omega the spiker to death. So how do we kill the exploders? Eruption windmill strike will kill one. Flying sleeves strike will do sixteen plus eighteen damage to the other. We can kill the other one, and then we can just. You know, play third eye. It seems like a pretty good turn, actually. Carve Reality Sands of Time is a kill on the weird expunger guy over here, but I think I'm actually just going to dump the cards in order to get to Vigilance, and in order to get to our Alpha, Beta, Omega, because I really don't want to try to hit the Spiker. I'd much rather just murder him. When I can, of course. Of course. Let's Vault. There's our Beta. Now, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, we're going to take one. But also, unfortunately, I uh, was not able to kill the Repulsor. We can kill the Spiker on this turn, though. But it will, will require hitting him and taking six. Otherwise, I have to wait on Omega. Am I okay waiting on Omega? I'd rather not take any damage if I can avoid it. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on the Omega. And we'll kill a repulsor normally, and we'll kill the spiker later. I just gotta hit him once when I have enough block. Or have some block, I should say. Make sure you die. Put that insight into our draw pile. I should have played insight into Sanctity, that was a bit of a misplay. Because we gotta get we gotta shuffle around quickly. Just wait. I will need to hit this guy at some point, should we, so we should do it. We'll do it on this turn. Evaluate, evaluate. We have enough block. Sands of time once, and now the Omega will kill him, because the Omega only does 50 damage, not 55. Get another fairy in a bottle. I, I really like the idea of Power Potion, Duplication Potion, because if you Power Potion, Diva form, duplicate it, you're going to have so much energy. And I think one fairy in a bottle is okay. But I'm really grabbing these potions and I'm thinking, we can hold these potions for the heart fight. We're gonna have a very good chance of, of getting an awesome possible synergy. 
Now, having said that, Reptomancer sucks ass, and I would like to kill this Reptomancer as quickly as possible. How can we make that happen? I would like to draw. I will play Alpha. I will play Flying Sleeves. I will play a Strike, and I will Vault. We gotta take out both of the daggers because these daggers do a lot of damage right now. Because they have plus four strength, we gotta, gotta take them out, we gotta KO them. Or put up some block. So I do it like this, because I want to talk to the hand on the Reptomancer, because the Reptomancer is going to live. And now I guess this is going to be a heavy block turn. So, I mean, we have a lot of blocks in hand. We can, we can, we can survive this. And we can kill the dagger for 29. For taking 21, 29 damage off the field. Although, instead of playing Windmill Strike, we should carve reality, play the Smite, because then Windmill Strike will be retained and do more damage later. Okay. So. And in fact, if we play Carve Reality, Carve Reality, Carve Reality, we can hold on to two strikes. But then we then we have too many retains in hand, but we are gonna play the Perseverances. Okay. Carve. Carve. Third eye, dump these cards. You know, actually keep Sands of Time. Might use it against the dagger on the next turn, although two smites will kill him as well. We're gonna Perseverance. We're gonna Evaluate. We are gonna take a little bit of damage, I think, but a little bit of damage is okay. We took 11. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. We gotta play Beta at some point. I need blocks. I got blocks. We're weak, so I can't kill him. Shit! That's 25 damage incoming. I made a mistake. I didn't realize that the Reptomancer made us weak on that attack. Did the Reptomancer make us weak? How did we get weak? You are a beta. Not if I don't play the card. But we, I really want to get Alpha out, because, sorry, uh, Omega out, because Omega would kill these daggers very easily. But I think right now I, I, I might have to duplicate just to avoid taking 25 damage. Yeah, we got another Elite fight coming up. I hate to do it, but we'll, um... I guess it doesn't really matter what we play, but we'll just play it like Smite Smite. Still taking 13 damage. I know we've got the Fairy in a Bottle, but that's kind of a last ditch, I would like to survive type of potion situation that I would like to try to, you know, keep. But the Reptomancer is dead. I guess all we really needed was the Wrath State. Oddly Smooth Stone, one dex is good. Another Vault is what I'm gonna take. Vaults are amazing. A little expensive, but still amazing. Uh, 22 damage incoming. I don't really like the cards that we have. I'm kind of thinking of vaulting right now. Like, pop. Vault. Because I, I only have one Perseverance, I'm, I'm gonna take damage on the turn. We might as well Vault just to see if we can get some better blocks. And we did get some better blocks. So I'm, I'm at least happy with that decision. A little Scry to get through the deck faster. And then we will... We're taking no damage, strike. And turn. I'll keep Flying Sleeves Miracles in my hand because then I could hit the Jaw Worm in order to do some extra damage and get some extra block. So Alpha. We will need some block. We might as well draw.
There's more block. Taking 10. I can put up 10 block. It's been done. We're kind of slow playing it a little bit, but I think it's, I think it's working. I think it's okay. As long as we have Perseverances and uh, the Sands of Time and Wimble Strike in our hand, these cards are getting stronger as time goes on. And in fact, we can kill the Middle Jaw Worm on this turn and get a lot of energy. So I think we should definitely erupt and incite Beta and play the Omega, and then they're all dead on the turn after that. So, erupt. Thirty-six damage. Insight. Theta. There's our Omega. We've done it. Yeah, that first vault, it was expensive, but it did let me set up for a... a decent future turn. So I don't mind it. Another Scry from Third Eye is actually pretty interesting. I don't want to thicken up the deck too much, but we are already at 21 cards, and I gotta get rid of these strikes and defends! So let's skip. Was Worship 5 Mantra? Nah. I like, the diff I like that Worship and Pray. The only difference is that Pray gives you one less Mantra, but plus one Insight into your draw pile. And it doesn't have retain, but it costs half as much. Like, that's a, that's a pretty ridiculous difference between the two cards. Now, yes, you need 10 Mantra to actually get to Divinity, and so you need to play Worship twice, but pray three times. But still, you get a much better benefit out of playing the, uh, the Pray card, I feel. Hey, Nemesis. 18. There we go. Alpha Vault on the next turn seems pretty decent. We do not need Eruption, though, because the Eruption uh, will not be able to hit the enemy on that turn because they're going to be intangible. So I'm just going to skip Eruption and skip Vigilance. We're just going to go straight for Alpha Vault Evaluate. 18 damage. Doesn't matter, I can Vault you. Or we could just put up enough block. Can we? Well, yeah, if I play Perseverance, we can. But if I don't play the Vaults, I'm just gonna wait for them to come back around anyways. Why not play the Vault, get Sanctity, play Perseverance on the next turn, and then hit him for a couple of attacks to get some block back if we need to. So, Alpha. Evaluate, Miracle, Vault. We'll keep the cheap Vault in the deck in case we need it. 18 damage. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get Sanctity, but that's fine. Next turn, we're guaranteed Beta. In fact, next turn, we're guaranteed Beta because we can use Insight or Sanctity to draw into it. But if we use Insight or Sanctity, we're not going to be able to get the, um... The Omega, unless we end this turn with six cards in hand, then we can only draw four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So now we're guaranteed Beta and Omega, I think. The only question is, can we... we we're not, because Insight and Sanctity are in our freaking draw pile. It doesn't matter because we can still play Omega on the next turn, but that's, that's funny. That's amusing. All right, so we're gonna get Omega. He's gonna be intangible, so we don't have to play it, but we should, especially if we have block. And we do have block. Perseverance is worth 20, so Omega. Perseverance. What? <sighs> yeah. yeah, just play it. Now we gotta hit him. Or block. Let's scry. Dump, 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 dump. We can do 53, is he dead? 53 damage plus 50 is 103 damage, right? Okay. Definitely overthinking this fight. 
meal ticket whenever you enter a shop heal. We are going to enter a shop on this floor, so I don't mind having that meal ticket. At, at a smite at the start of each turn, we, we have enough attacks, we don't need battle him. And pressure points, we're not doing mark. Signature move, we don't need special high damage attacks because we already have those. Can you play two vaults with omniscience? Nope. Any card that ends your turn cannot be used with Omniscience because it will literally end your turn in the middle of it. Unfortunate, but true. Yeah, I like the right path because we can hit three fires. Upgrade, upgrade, get the key piece. You know, make Alpha and Nate make the vault cheaper. I think those are going to be very important cards to get upgraded. And there's a shop in the middle of it, and there's... Omamori gone. Transient. This is a a Omega Wrath situation. If we can get it. I'm gonna play the vault. You're doing 21 damage. I can hit you. There we go. I wanna play that Vigilance because when we play Eruption, I wanna play a lot of cards. If we can get to the Eruption. I am gonna play a Miracle, I think, on this turn as well, just because I think. We're going to draw some good stuff. There's a lot of good cards in my draw pile right now. So we're probably going to want the energy anyways. And this way I can play Sanctity for the block and card draw. There's my Eruption. So we're going to play Eruption first. Then Talk to the Hand. Then Flying Sleeves. He's doing no damage. Uh, we will keep... No, we don't need to keep Smite. Sands of Time will do freaking 40 damage to this guy. That's perfectly fine. Dino Caden, good night. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Is Alpha the last Alpha's the last card? There you go. How rude. Now, do I want to vault? <laughs> we could vault. I mean, we basically just have a free turn to get to beta. We have enough damage and we have enough block. Well, we it's hard to block against this guy, but we have enough damage. And by doing what we did, we got back to Flying Sleeves and Sands of Time, which is pretty decent. Cards I want to hold on to because they're good attacks. So give me a Sands of Time. Flying Sleeves. 28 damage incoming. Hit him. Hit him. End turn. Windmill Strike is okay. Not amazing, but decent enough. Now, do we want to play Omega? Is it is it too little too late? 68 was half of his HP. We can play Omega. It'll work. It's kind of hoping for Sands of Time. Energy Potion. Energy Potion is a good potion to have. I'm happy for it. I'm happy to have it. Happy to see it. Let's go for the Alpha first. Then we'll do Vault. And then we'll, right here, I think, we'll get the, uh, the Key Piece. The last remaining Key Piece. The last of the Key Pieces. Whenever you Shuffle Scry... Put an attack from your draw pile into your hand. That would be good to get uh, Talk to the Hand, Eruption, Sands of Time, Windmill Strike. Gain four plated armor. That's a pretty good potion. I think we're just going to take Lantern for the turn one energy. We'll remove some cards. We do not need the strikes. Although this is making strike dummy worse, but I don't think there's any strikes in the Watcher's deck. Like this is, strike dummy is very good on the 
ironclad character because you have all those twin strikes, perfected strikes, uh, etc., etc. What's a strike that draws a card when you play it? I forget. And uh, there's a couple of strikes in the silent deck, but I don't know of any strikes in the watcher deck. There probably is some. I'm probably forgetting them. Uh, I'm going to save my money, though. We're going to save our money and then spend it on the, on the shop on the next floor. I don't want those cards. What I do want to do, though, is get the next vault upgraded. Windmill strike. You know what? You're right, and that explains why this card is doing 13 damage. It's not that great on a two energy card, but you got me. You got me. Give me the alpha. Can we draw. Give me an evaluate. Give me a third eye. We're going to get through the deck as quickly as we can. Get to that beta. We got another vault coming up, too, so we should be hopefully fine. Could erupt on this turn, but we don't have vigilance. Although we can vault on the next turn, vault and beta. Actually, if we vault beta, we will be able to play Omega on the turn after that. So I kind of feel like eruption does work here. Eruption. Windmill Strike. Smite. Keep the Insight. Next turn we'll play the Vault. Next turn after that we'll play Omega with three Miracles. We'll have enough energy to play whatever we want. In fact, we can do it on this turn. Insight. Miracle. Omega. Miracle. Miracle. Vault. There's 50 damage. Did we take damage from Constricted? I think we did. I was not paying attention. <laughs> what else is new? Uh, so if I put a 10 block, we're good. There we go. You should be good, right? You're dead? Good. Yeah, I think we took damage from Constricted, but oh well. Skip card. We will get the key piece. Rock hole. We're going, going up against the Awakened One. I don't really play powers. I only play one. And it's a good power, for sure. But we only play one. So we're going to play Alpha. Let me block and draw. We have enough block right now. We don't need to play anymore. I think we should vault as quickly as possible to get through our deck. I think that's important to do. So I'm going to shuffle an Insight. And vault. Or... Or actually, what if we wait on the vault because we have enough block up on this turn? We'd have to put up 20 block on the next turn if we don't play the vault. But we can't retain the vault. Is the <sighs> Give me the vault. I had to play all my Perseverances to get enough block on that turn. That wasn't great. But there's our beta. All we gotta do is live. We'll heal the full after the fight. Omega's coming up soon. It's at the bottom of the of the pile, by the way. I kind of feel like insighting and trying to vault. We didn't get it, but we did get good block cards, which I do appreciate. And next turn we can Omega vault. The Omega Vaults. <laughs> we, we might as well draw a Windmill Strike. Okay, we're going to take 10. There's our Omega. There's our Vault. He's going to get stronger from the Omega, but it's worth it. Cultist is already dead. All we got to do is... Just keep blocking turn after turn after turn, and we are in the clear. Dump it. Dump it. Blocks are good. Keep them. You're doing 28 damage. 28 damage. No, 28 damage there. 
It's 28 block. Explode. <laughs> well, we're, because of his healing, we're technically doing like 40 damage a turn, which is still good enough. Limbo Strike is getting stronger and stronger. Let's just put a block. 21 damage. I think we're just gonna put up some block. Dump it, dump it. This is one of those runs where we don't we don't attack anymore. We just block. <laughs> Which honestly I'm fine with. I need to put up some more block. That's good enough. I like getting insights into the draw pile. 41 damage. Perseverance does 29 block. That's pretty good. Definitely worth playing one of those at least. Dump the defend. Might as well play Sands of Time. Might as well play anything that we have in our hand that we, we don't care about. You know, any extra damage is still extra damage. Might as well play it. What are you saving it for? 33. There's 33 block. So we'll, we'll keep Sands of Time coming back around. We'll dump all the other attacks that we have. Actually, why not Insight Sands of Time? And then Miracle Evaluate just so we get the Insight back in our draw pile. Not, not a very good use of the Miracle because we had enough block on that turn, but I still think it's okay. Keep holding on to this perseverance. Perseverance is a, is an interesting card. It's kind of like the. It reminds me of the um, the defects um, card that gets more block whenever you play it. Genetic algorithm, but it, it's genetic algorithm. But you have to retain it, and it, it just gets stronger and stronger. I kind of like it. <laughs> it's very strange. You know, the longer the fight goes on, the better a card like that actually gets. This is the boss that you are the worst at, Milk Jug. It's, um, it's a tricky boss. Especially if you rely on, on powers, you have to try to not play them. But the, the, the one thing that I like about the Awakened One is that the Awakened One does not scale infinitely. If you do not play powers, the Awakened One does not get any stronger. I actually really like that about that fight. Perseverance needs to get better. If we're playing Alpha, Beta, Omega, we want blocks. We have 520 gold. Tungsten Rod is amazing, we have to buy it. <clears throat> Secret Technique is really good to draw beta. Cultist Potion is also great. Play the top three cards of your draw pile. That's very good if you can play it with Omega, you can just play it for free. Mirror, we could mirror Alpha to get two Alpha, Beta, Omegas. <laughs> you know, I kind of like it. Let's do it. And then with this Distilled Chaos, should we even play it? If we play a Vault accidentally, it'll end our turn and start a new one. But is that really the end of the world for a potion? Dump the Energy Potion and give me Distilled Chaos. Let's do it. Mirror on Alpha is stupid but fun. Well, now I have two Alphas on turn one, so... Possibly not a good thing, but... All we need is one of the betas to come around. Now, this is not gonna apply. That's fine. And honestly, with two vaults, 
we could have we could have duplicated a, a, a vault, but with two vaults, we could we could draw the vaults. I might chaos right now. I might play beta and then chaos to try to find a vault because uh, we don't have good block, and we're taking we're taking nearly fifty damage. We're taking forty eight damage on this turn. That HP is important. I'm gonna play beta. I'm gonna play evaluate. I'm gonna play distilled chaos. We did vaults. I mean, that's kind of exactly what I wanted. We got another vault. Honestly, kind of exactly what I wanted. We play sanctity. Didn't really draw what I wanted. Because now I'm thinking if we vault again, we can play Omega, do 50 damage to all enemies, and then I don't have to hit these guys nearly as much to, to kill them, or to kill one of them anyways. And Perseverance will get a little bit stronger between now and the next turn. It's going to cost us a lot of energy to do what we want to do, but... Like, what else are we going to do with our turn? Just put up a crap amount of block? No. So honestly, let's, um... Hit someone in Vault. Take another turn. There's our Omega. And then we put up all the block we can. So, Perseverance... Perseverance. Defend. Not a not a not as much block as I would like, but these guys are dead in three turns now. And you know what? Tungsten Rod did help us a little bit to avoid some damage. You're dead. You're dead next turn. What hit us? Did we have a burn? Did I burn? I burned. That was stupid. Bronze Scales. Thorns is very nice to have on the heart fight, so I'm okay with that. So we don't have the duplication potion, but we do have the power potion. Let's play it. Study. At the end of the turn, shuffle an insight into your draw pile. Like water. At the end of your turn, if you're in calm, gain block. Blech. Master Reality. Whenever a card is created during combat, upgrade it. Okay, okay, okay. If we master reality, we'll add a beta. What the hell is an upgraded beta? Adds an upgraded omega. What the hell is an upgraded omega? I think it does 60 damage instead of 50 damage. Study is better because we can, uh, we can get the insights so we can draw through our deck more. But Master Reality is amusing, so I'm going to take Master Reality. <laughs> so we have an upgraded beta, which adds a... Hold on. Shuffle an Omega into your draw pile. Wait, so beta... Wait, beta plus only costs one energy. Yo, I like it. I like it a lot. Actually makes Master Reality pretty decent to play with Alpha, Beta, Omega. So we'll play the other Alpha. And then I will Vault. Why? We we want to get through the deck as quickly as we can, so let's do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We can play Sanctity. There's our Beta. Shuffles an Omega. But it's not going to be an Omega. It's going to be an upgraded Omega. And upgraded Omega will do 60 damage at the end of all turn instead of 50 damage. I, I do like the upgraded beta, beta because it's it's super cheap, but Omega still costs three. Um, I should hit you. By the way, Tungsten Rod is so good against the heart. Beat of death basically doesn't do anything, and three times 12 is actually two times 12. So there you go. So Omega and Beta. Honestly, go ahead and hit me for 24 damage. I don't care. You're going to take a lot of damage. You're going to take 
60 from um, from Omega. You're going to take a whole bunch of damage from the bronze scales. That was like another 36. Honestly, give me the Omega. I will apply talk to the hand to you. And then I'm just going to die. Thank you, potion. Did we heal when we used the potion? How did Toy Ornithopter work there? <laughs> I was not paying attention, but I hope it worked. Beneficial in my favor, let's say. Let's play Sands of Time. Vigilance is coming up, but I don't, I don't want to risk it not showing up. Because if it doesn't show up, we're dead on the next turn. So instead, we're going to Sands of Time. Windmill Strike. And... Am I gonna vault? I'm gonna vault, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to get an insight into the draw pile, I want to become calm, and I want to get perseverance in my hand to get stronger. So I'm gonna miracle vault for the turn. It also gets the void out of here, and it gets the wound and slime out of here a little bit faster. So now, we'll play Vigilance Evaluate. We did 300 damage in, well, technically two turns. And we're going to do 120 damage on this turn. If we can hit the Corrupt Heart for, like, 50, they're dead. I don't think we can, but at the very least, we can put up a decent amount of block. We can put up, you know, 30 block here. There, I mean, Heart's doing 48, but we can get enough to block, luckily. Also, Insight. It's Insight Plus, not, in, not uh, Insight Neutral. Master Reality was probably... Not super important, but at least it's fun. So let's Perseverance, Insight, and then uh, I will block, I will block, I will Miracle, I will Miracle, I will block. We're taking no damage. And the heart is dead! This has been... the Alpha, Beta, Omega run of the Watcher. <laughs> <laughs> Two alphas! Not overkill. I like that upgraded beta. I wish that the upgraded Omega made it two energy instead of three. I will say that, because that would be significantly easier to play. Three energy is a little prohibitive, but still worth it. I mean, 120 damage per turn, 240 damage if you use the Vault passively, you don't even have to play any attacks. We ended up not even needing any attacks on this run. We still had a few, Carve Reality, you know, Talk to the Hand, Windmill Strike, uh, one extra strike, Sands of Time, Flying Sleeves, but we ended up not needing those cards. We needed them to get to Alpha, though. It's not like we could have never taken attack and won the run. We probably would have died at the first floor boss. But at the end, if we had, you know, an extra 10 cards we could remove from the deck, I know it's being removed. Attack, 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 attack. Because we didn't play him. We, we, we blew up with Omega. That's all we did. I really like it. Alpha and Vault. Such wonderful cards. Especially for two energy, the Vault Plus, if you have an Energy Relic, that's playable. If you have multiple Vaults and you can play them, you could get 10 Energy worth of a turn one, cycle through your entire deck and play all of your Enablers. That's kind of what I, li well, I like about Vault. It's what I liked about the old Omniscience of, uh, of the Watcher, which was you could scry your entire draw pile and guarantee yourself cards on the next turn. It's what I like about many, many Seeks in the Defect deck. You can pick whatever cards you want to play on turn one, especially if you get a Seek in a bottle. That's what I like about the Omniscience in the Watcher now, which allows you to just play your play a card from your draw pile multiple times. You can play whatever you want on turn one. Getting those Vaults in there basically means, hey, I can get through my deck faster. I can play whatever I want. I can get more value out of my turns. It's it's pretty good. And Alpha, 
I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like it might be slow on certain fights, but on other fights, it's so nice because you 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 literally don't have to worry about your attacks. And I feel like there are synergies that you can and cards that you can get that will allow you to do 50 damage per turn, but for six energy, you can just do 50 damage per turn for the rest of the fight for no extra energy. Instead of playing six energy to maybe do 100 damage over the course of a couple of turns with standard attacks, entering wrath state, exiting wrath state, you can just play Alpha, Beta, Omega, and all of a sudden, you've dumped your energy into the into the cards, and then you just put your energy into block. Get yourself some draw. Insight. Sanctity. What's the scry card? Third eye. Add a couple of these. Evaluate. Good stuff. Good relics, too. Good energy relics. Omomori Cursed Key is a wonderful combination. In any case, good run. For those of you on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. Check me out on Twitch if I want to go live. Support me on Twitch, Patreon, and Streamlabs. And I hope to see you here again for the next Watch or Run in Slay the Spire.